Let's say you're a wrestler and you're stuck on a desert island and if you could only perform one exercise for the rest of your life there, it would probably have to be the pull-ups. Okay, that was a pretty bad example. You can probably do a lot more than a pull-up on an island, but yeah, you get my point. So wrestling is obviously a sport that primarily emphasizes pulling strength. It may even be argued that this is of higher importance than most other athletic maneuvers. When you go for a double leg takedown, when you go for a single leg takedown, when you go for an underhook, when you snap your opponent's face on the canvas, all of those maneuvers emphasize your posterior muscles, that is your pulling muscles. And the pull-ups is the absolute king of pulling strength. And in almost every wrestling study where they compare successful wrestlers to their lesser successful counterparts, one thing that almost always stands out in all of those studies is the pull-ups. The better wrestlers can perform more pull-ups. In this particular study right here, they analyzed 26 male Iranian national team wrestlers in the Greco-Roman subcategory. And all of the wrestlers had competed in at least three continental or international competitions. After this, they were all divided into two distinct groups. One successful group and one less successful group. The criteria for being successful in this case was having won at least one medal in an international or continental competition. That is, either the World Championships or the Asian Championships. And this is the results they came up with. Look at this difference between the successful wrestlers and the lesser successful wrestlers. Keep in mind all of those, they are world class wrestlers, like they compete in a high level, they compete in the world class, in the continental and international championships, like this is no joke, but they still found this gigantic difference. And here is another similar study with similar findings, but this time 168 male Polish elite freestyling Greco-Roman wrestlers, and they once again divided them into a successful and less successful group. And similarly, this is the results that they came up with for the successful wrestlers and the less successful wrestlers. And in this study, they analyzed one single Iranian four-time world champion Greco-Roman wrestler. Did I say single? I don't mean that he's like, he's probably married, I don't know. I mean a singular wrestler, like one wrestler in the study, in the 55 kilogram class. He was able to perform 50 pull-ups, and that is very, very significant. Now, all in all, after analyzing the data of all of those studies made on those elite male wrestlers in various weight classes, it appears that they can perform between 15 to 50 pull-ups, depending on the region and the level, the weight class, and all of those factors. So 15 to 50 pull-ups. Now, one thing that was unclear about all of those studies was how strict the technique was. Like, how much did they permit leg swings? Because if you're allowed to use leg swings, this will contribute significantly to the ease of the execution. Generally, in calisthenics competitions, when you perform pull-ups, the legs, they have to be completely straightened out and they cannot contribute to the lift at all. And you have to pull yourself up with your chin above the bar. And when you go down, the arms have to be completely locked out before you're permitted to proceed to the next repetition. So this aspect was unclear about the study, but even if they were allowed to use leg swings 15 to 50 pull-ups, like this is still an extremely impressive number and it is way above the norm, leg swing or not. And the important finding here is not necessarily that, it is the finding that successful wrestlers, they are stronger in this department than less successful wrestlers. The evidence is overwhelming. So this can provide a lot of value for you when you decide to design your own strength and conditioning plan for wrestling, the importance of pulling strength that is, of pull-ups especially. Now one interesting finding about those studies is that the Iranian wrestlers, they seem on a general basis to score higher in the pull-ups compared to the other studied nations. But once again, we don't know the discrepancy between the technical execution and data from other high-performing wrestling nations such as Russia and the US are very lacking. So it's no surprise because Iran is a very proficient country in wrestling. Now, if we observe the technique of the majority of Iranian wrestlers, we can see that they heavily emphasize the underhook especially. And this can be argued stresses the upper body pulling muscles significantly. And if they do this day after day, all the time, if this is a major part of their technical arsenal, it can be argued that they also perform good in the pull-ups. Now, unfortunately, there is no standard for like general populations, how many pull-ups they can do. But we can look at the fitness test that is used by the US military services. And according to them, the average male can perform around nine repetitions while the average woman can perform three. And that is the people that is seeking to the US military service once again. And according to their standards, once again, a man that can perform 18 reps and a woman that can perform seven reps, they are considered fit. 
So now I'm gonna introduce you to my own very unscientific, completely based on experience standard for pull-ups. How I test my athletes for their pulling strength when it comes to the pull-ups. Keep in mind once again, take all of those tables I'm about to show you with a pinch of salt. They are only valid in a certain weight class because if you take a 50 kilogram athlete and have him do 10 pull-ups and you take a 100 kilogram athlete, it's gonna be a huge discrepancy there. So keep that in mind. Anyways, when I test my athletes, during the test occasion, they get a maximum amount of time of 100 seconds and they are not allowed to let go of the bar when doing the pull-ups. They have to hang at all times. The arms must be completely extended out between the repetitions, that is from a dead hang position. And you have to get your chin above the bar minimally for it to count as a valid repetition. And obviously you're not allowed to use the momentum, so no leg or hip swing, your legs need to be completely extended and kept that way on every repetition. Here are the tables for males and females, you can analyze this, look at it, see how you compare to it and set benchmarks for yourself. Don't take this seriously, this is once again very unscientific, just see it as a fun game and use it as motivation for your own training.